I recently became involved in a Viper jet project when a friend crashed his expensive RC model. To cheer him up, I started designing a larger 2.4 meter version he could build himself. Unfortunately, he replaced the kit, leaving me with an unfinished design that I'm reluctant to abandon. My online research revealed a scarcity of information about the Viper jet, with many enthusiasts seeking three views or plans on various forums. My Fusion 360 drawing isn't a precise replica, but rather a conceptual study based on various online images. It's designed to be a general blueprint for a Viper jet-like aircraft. The use of forms, surfaces and solids simplifies the design for potential use with plywood, polystyrene or fiberglass construction. The size and shape can be modified as the drawing includes a complete design history. All components and steps are clearly labelled for clarity. To avoid copyright infringement, reference photos used as backgrounds during the design process have been removed. Additional images can be added to enhance the drawing's accuracy. Let's examine the drawing in more detail. The design began with a side view sketch outlining essential curves and lines. The canopy area might appear inaccurate due to its later addition. However, this shape seamlessly integrates the canopy into the fuselage, avoiding sharp edges. The wing root airfoil was sketched next. It incorporates the airfoil for the central wing section and a thicker one for the wing fuselage transition. While a NACA 2412 airfoil was used as a base for the wing, the trailing edge was modified to the standard 3mm thickness preferred by modelers. This approach was applied to the elevator, rudder, and winglets as well. The elevator uses a NACA 0010 airfoil. The wing has a 0.5 degree angle of attack, while the elevator is at 0 degrees relative to the baseline. Exhaust sketches were then created perpendicular to the side view. The fuselage was modelled using fusion forms, which proved to be the most crucial step. The form is adjustable and can be refined to accurately match a real aircraft with more detailed data. The fusion forms are actually surfaces, which I converted to solids as quickly as possible. The solid join command proved simpler to use than the surface trim command for combining elements. Before creating the solid model, several preparatory steps were taken. This involved creating planes and corresponding airfoil and shape sketches for the wing, elevator and rudder. Next, the air intake was patched and stitched together with the fuselage. Excess material at the end of the fuselage was removed. The fuselage was then halved, mirrored, and stitched with the rear exhaust face to form a complete solid fuselage. A section of the fuselage was removed to accommodate the canopy. At this stage, I began assigning appearances to the existing bodies. The canopy's central shape and four profiles were then drawn and lofted. The elevator sections were created using lofting techniques based on the previously drawn airfoils. The wings were similarly lofted, utilizing the thicker central airfoil to smoothly blend the wing with the fuselage. The wing's trailing edge was rounded, and both the wing and elevator were mirrored to complete the assembly. The rudder was lofted next. The canopy was then divided into glass and frame components. The winglets were more complex to create and involved multiple steps, including shaping the winglet tips. Once completed, the winglet was mirrored to the opposite side.
The rudder tip was created in two stages, using multiple profiles along its cord. Filleting was applied to shape the areas behind the elevator and rudder trailing edges near the exhaust. The exhaust itself was then lofted and filleted. The air intake rib was sketched and lofted on the left side, then mirrored to the right. The bottom stabilizers were created in the same manner, with the rear one being mirrored. At this point, all bodies were complete and converted into individual components. The next step involved applying decals, which proved challenging due to the non-planar surfaces. I quickly realised that manually painting the model would be impractical due to the distortions required. Creating pre-distorted decals was not a desired approach. To simulate a painted finish, I opted to create a coloured surface offset by approximately 0.2mm from the model's surface. While this effectively creates a visual impression of a painted model, the gap between the surfaces is noticeable upon closer inspection. This method is suitable for presentation purposes, but should be disabled when using the drawing as a construction blueprint. The final step involved converting the fuselage back to a surface model for demonstration purposes. This was achieved by unstitching the fuselage, removing faces such as the air intakes, exhaust, and wing airfoils, and then restitching the remaining faces. This process can be replicated for other parts if desired. Adding a few decals significantly improved the model's appearance. The license number displayed is random and does not correspond to any actual registration. This concludes the basic overview of my Viper jet design. I hope this information inspires others to embark on their own modelling projects. I appreciate you taking the time to learn about my process. Your feedback is valuable to me, so please feel free to share your thoughts. Thank you for watching.